They're scared of the balloons. Franklin's afraid. He's all crouched down to the ground. You are so silly. You just passed level one, the baby balloons. Now you got the level two boss here. Callie's not afraid of anything. Callie, don't, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Don't bite. Boom. <laughs> do, do, do. This is a good example on how other dogs, like having a pack, influences your timid dog, Franklin. He would have never touched this balloon at all. He would have freaked out. But because he saw his brother, Callie, confidently touching it, saying, hey, it's okay, that made Franklin gain a lot of confidence. So that's why it's good to have a little pack. They balance each other out. Now it's pee pee time. Willie, I need to take your diaper off. So you guys, check it out. I bought two blueberry bushes. Here's a blueberry bush. There's a blueberry bush. And a mango tree! That's right, in Florida, you can literally grow mango trees. I think that's so cool. This tree will get pretty big too, if it survives. I'm pretty sure it'll survive. It'll get like a regular tree size, like huge. Give me some mangoes! Oh my god, no. Bugs are eating it. Oh, that's so annoying. The giant Florida grasshoppers are eating my leaves. No, what am I going to do? It's these things right here that are eating my leaves. So today we are going to be going to the grocery store and we are going to be buying some raw food for the dogs. I'm going to start on our raw food journey, primarily for Franklin who has allergies. So I'm hoping it'll help him with his allergies. Even though I'm a vegetarian, I have no problem buying meat for my dog. If they need it for their diet, I don't mind buying it for them. And if you can see way back there, that is Tupelo grazing on, oh she heard me say her name, good girl. Oh, she's waiting for me. Hi, lady. Oh, you're so pretty. Are you enjoying grazing? Yeah, it's so nice out here, huh? You have all this nice grass to eat. You guys, her top line with proper nutrition has filled out so much. Oh my gosh, I am so proud. Look at that neck. That neck is beastly considering what it used to be. She is looking so good. Oh, here comes a wild Franklin. Tupelo is so curious about all animals. She loves all animals. I brought my macaw in the stables and it was the funniest thing to see the horse's reactions. I'll have to film it for you guys. Franklin lays down before he does a surprise attack on Callie. It's the funniest thing. He'll lay down, see how his feet are perched under his legs and he'll just boof. Willie's coming. Willie, come here. Let me take that diaper off you. Are you scratching yourself? Do you want me to scratch you? Oh, look at her head. She's like, yeah, boy. Scratching that chest. Whoa, look at that muscle. Wow. It's a nice view of a horse. Here comes Callie. <laughs> Trying to get a sniff in there? She's the prettiest horse I've ever seen. Yeah, you are. Look at you. All the dogs ran straight to the pond. Oh, TB, what are you doing? You just frolicking around? Do you feel good? You feel good, look at you. He's coming! He's coming! <laughs> Callie's coming! Woohoo! Oh, good boy. Wow, look at that butterfly, you guys. Oh my gosh. Living in Florida, I haven't seen cooler butterflies ever. So you guys, a couple weeks ago, I planted some sunflower seeds, and I planted them all around this area and for some reason, none of them took except in this little reclaimed fountain. So look at this one of my sunflowers that's bloomed. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen this one yet. That one's such a baby, it's so little. And then we have the ginormous skyscraper that's gonna be opening up soon. And then in here, I have my little succulent garden and just some random plants down here. When I first moved in here, this was all bare and I planted this and now it looks beautiful and full and luscious. These are just growing out of control. by Walmart I went in the hot tub for like four hours I literally sweated all my makeup off I went to Walmart and I bought eggs I bought chicken wings or drumsticks that is some broccoli and carrots I also bought some neck bones for tomorrow's breakfast money cat found the drumsticks on the table and she opened up the bag and stole a drumstick and started eating it she's very interested so do you want to go raw too do you want to eat some meat I bet you do Woohoo! 
So I have been mixing in some raw ground beef for like a whole week now. So they're getting used to raw. This is not just like cold turkey. I'm still mixing in kibble. What I'm gonna do is give Franklin and Callie a drumstick and then I'll have money and I don't know. I don't know about money. Maybe I'll just break a little piece off for her. I'll have to find some smaller meat pieces for her because the drumstick's too big. We're gonna slowly start to transition. Money Cat is trying to get the drumsticks again. Oh my God. Okay, so I brought the food outside. Sit. Stay. Willie, sit. As you can see, they're really excited. What I put in there is one whole drumstick, some oatmeal, some celery, some cooked broccoli, and cooked carrots, and an egg with shell. I meant to add some fish oil, but honestly, I forgot, and I'm already out here now, so it's okay. Green, apple, blue, okay, okay. Oh, Callie went straight for the chicken leg. Dogs who eat raw food every day are lucky because it's like getting a bone every day. Franklin doesn't know what to think. He's like, what the heck? Oh, he's going for the vegetables first. Oh, wait, what's he trying to get? He's trying to get the kibble. Like, where's all my kibble at, mom? Oh, there you go. He's, he's found the chicken leg. Callie ate his whole chicken leg. Oh my gosh, I already know this is gonna be a great diet for Callie. Franklin, on the other hand, is having some trouble deciding if he wants to eat. Willie is like, what the heck is this? So far, the dog most interested is Callie, and then it goes Willie, and then it goes... Wait, where's Franklin? Oh wow, he's over there peeing. And now Willie's going over there. Willie, you're wearing a diaper. Frankie, let's eat, come on. This is good food, dude. Who taught you how to eat? This is yummy. The ants are all fighting over who is going to carry, or maybe they're doing teamwork here. Looks like teamwork to me. There we go, he's starting to get it, get the hang of it now. Willie's over here, champion, eating that meat. Now Callie left. <laughs> Callie's returned. My usual nighttime routine is obviously feeding them inside, but with Florida, we have such nice weather. It's literally like, I don't know, I don't mind them feeding them outside, especially if they're gonna eat raw food. They normally eat kibble with uh, some egg in it. That's what I normally feed them, but because of Franklin's allergies, I think I'm gonna switch. I don't know, we're just testing it out right now to the raw food. And then we are going to go to the barn and feed the barn animals, and then we'll come back in the side and feed the cats. We'll feed Barry the fish, and then we will feed my macaw. So Callie left his broccoli. He decided he didn't want to finish his broccoli. Are you gonna eat the, all the broccoli, Franklin? I think Franklin's afraid to eat the bones. Franklin's got in a lot of trouble before. Not from me, but from his body eating bones. <laughs> I think he has a little bit of reservations there. But as you can see, see his little feet, they're all swollen. And they say raw food will give the dog a better uh, immune system, so that's what I'm hoping it'll do. I gave Franklin Kelly's extra broccoli, and Franklin likes broccoli. I'm thinking in the future I might give Franklin something smaller than a chicken drumstick. I think maybe like a chicken wing, or I have some neck bones. Maybe tomorrow I'll give him some neck bones. He doesn't want to just bite into the, the leg. I think it's too meaty and big for him. Well, Jay just walked up and he went in the house right now because he said he thinks he just hit a sinkhole in our backyard. Well, Jay got our UTV stuck in the mud and then we just tried to drive our truck over there to pull it out and we made these huge line marks in our grass because our grass is so wet. And that's not like skidding out or anything, that's just driving. So if you look far in the distance, bing! Well, there you go. As you can see, there's our manure compost dump pile that we've been making. Wow, that is stuck. Look at this forest, you guys. This is our backyard forest. In the barn right now, here is our cat food. So we are feeding the barn cats right now, George and Molly. So they each get a scoop. And as you can see, they're on top of our hay. Hi, what are you guys doing? They love to sleep up there. But when our hay pile goes down and we only have a little bit of hay, they sleep somewhere else. They don't like to be low, they like to be very high and away from predators such as dogs. If you're curious, no. My dogs do not get along with these cats. That's primarily the reason why I get cats as kittens and I raise them up with my dogs because these cats are not raised up with dogs so they're afraid of dogs so they run whenever they see a dog. Hi Toopy! Hi! So Jay already fed them grain. What we normally do is get their buckets. That's Flight's bucket, that's Tupelo's bucket. Flight gets one whole scoop of grain this much. He gets that three times a day. And Tupelo, since she's not skinny, 
gets about that much of grain three times a day as well. So since he just fed grain, I'm not gonna give them any more grain, but we do need to give them their hay. I'm going to take her hay nut. Tupelo's hay nut is pink. Flight's hay nut is purple. And then we're going to get two flakes for each horse. And they get that three times a day as well. If they're grazing all day, sometimes I'll skip lunchtime, but they always get breakfast and dinner. feed flight first and normally before I throw in the hay bag I will click to them like this just to let them know that something is going to be flying in their stall so they don't spook now I will feed two below hello girl mission successful yum 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 Here are my quails. I do not feed them at nighttime. <laughs> they already have food and water, so they're not going to be getting fed. But in case you wanted to say hello, I just gave them all new logs today, if you see that. I gave all of my Quaternix quails new logs. You can see some broccoli in there. I threw them some broccoli earlier. They love broccoli. What's up, Han Solo? This is my, my awesome quail. This is my good quail, this is my good quail. Okay, so now it's time to feed Euro and Money. And I think I need meat that's like cut up. I haven't done my research for putting cats on raw food diet yet. I don't know, maybe I won't do it. I give them a can of cat food on top of dry food. Here comes Money, <laughs> she flew up here. All right, so I pour some in each of their bowls. And now we have happy indoor meownies. Yum, 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 yum. Now it's time to feed Barry the fish, so I just give him a couple pellets of this. Yum, yum, yum. Barry the fish. And as for water, the cats and dogs share this. It's like a water fountain. As you can see, Franklin loves to get water all over the floor. Now that the horses have eaten their grain, we need to go back out, and I'm gonna turn them out so that they can have a nighttime turnout. I like to give them nighttime turnouts and morning turnouts and then we bring them in in the afternoon when it's really hot. And then one thing that I also forgot to do, I need to fill Flight's water bowl up. So here are Flight's water buckets. Both buckets are filled with water. Now Flight has an automatic watering system in his stall, so does Tupelo. But unlike Tupelo, Flight cribs. And what cribbing is basically is like they put their teeth on something and then they suck in air. It's a vice they normally develop when they're uh, a baby. They get weaned too soon. So Flight does crib, and he cribs on his automatic watering system over there in the corner, which means that he knocks the balance off place and it doesn't work as well as it should. So see how it's like off its thing? There's a trigger in there, and when he cribs on this, he pulls it off and it won't automatically refill there, so it should fit like that. But before I let them out in the turnouts, I'm going to give them a good spray with fly spray and mosquito repellent because there are a lot of mosquitoes out here, especially now because it's the wet season in Florida and there's a lot of stagnant water. So I'm just gonna give them a good spray with the fly spray. And this repels mosquitoes and flies and other stuff that's bad. And to my dismay, shaking it, there's not a lot left. So I am going to make some more. I just used this bottle. It's not actually laser sheen in here, it's uh, fly spray because I make it myself. Well, to my dismay, I can't find my concentrate. I think Jay might have used the rest and not have told me, so I'm gonna have to pick some more concentrate up tomorrow, but there is some left in here, so I'm just gonna dilute this with the water and then give them a nice spray. Let's finish spraying. Flight likes to stand there. Tupelo likes to walk around. When I spray her, maybe she'll stand still for the video. Oh yeah, she's eating, she's good. There we go, she's moving. She's like, don't spray me. Come back here. I'm doing this so you don't get bit by mosquitoes. Good, good girl. 
Now I'm going to open up their gates and let them have access to the pasture. And if it rains, they can come back into their stalls or if they want to sleep or get blown by the fan, they can go back into their stalls. Or if they're bored, they can go out and enjoy the grass. And as you can see, that bucket out there is an automatic watering trough. Now I am good with the horses. The horses are all done, the dogs are all done, the quails are done because I didn't do anything to the quails. Only thing left to do is the macaw and she doesn't eat this early i feed her twice a day she gets fed at like 2 p.m and then like 8 30 ish 9. i have my baby bird out my baby amelia and now it's time to feed her i feed her with a syringe and as you can see that that is a behavior that a baby does to their mom you're hungry oh. when they go black and then they throw one wing. that right there that says hey mom feed me I'm right here, mom. Pay attention to me. <laughs> yeah. That's me, baby. So when I first got her, I had a hand feed her three times a day. She let me know when she was done. She was done with breakfast. So now we are just feeding two times a day. Oh, <gasps> she loves that. That's so nice. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> feed me. When she decides she doesn't want to eat lunch anymore, we'll just be feeding dinner. <laughs> Eventually she won't want to eat dinner anymore and I'll feed her as long as she wants when she feels she's ready to be fully weaned then that's her decision and she loves this to get rubbed oh it feels so good hand feeding a baby bird is very particular if you are not experienced I wouldn't recommend doing it I have two spoonfuls of her formula you can hear in the background getting excited. She's like, give me that food. It makes it similar to how you would like baby formula. I'm assuming, I don't know, I never fed a baby before. I get my syringe, I pop it out. She is ready to eat. I make sure there's no air bubbles, shoot the air out. And then I get a cloth ready for when she spits it out if she does. Okay, and now I will hold her head. And she gets very excited. She's very vocal. Good girl. That's so good. Yeah, that's so good. You just want cuddles from your mom. Good bird. Would you like any more? Or are you done? So she'll let me know when she's done. If I put this to her mouth. By her not giving a reaction, that means that she's done eating, she doesn't want any more. So I'll go ahead and rinse all that out. Now I need to go clean her beak. She just flew over to the couch, right next to the kitty. Come here, I need to clean your beak. Yeah, I need to clean your beak. Let me see you. So I just get this little paper towel, clean her beak, make sure there's no formula on there. Very good, bird. All right, now we're gonna bring you back to your cage. Oh, you're excited. And then, She's very happy at night. She loves to make noises. Oh, you're very happy, right? Oh, I love you. Good night, baby bird. So now that everyone's fed, it's time to feed me. So I'm gonna have a beer. I'm gonna bring Jay up a beer. And then I'm going to paint. I started painting recently, which is so exciting. This is uh, a painting off someone else's work. It's not my own work, not from my head, nope. I'm not gonna claim that it is, but I enjoy painting a lot. I think the only thing that I messed up kind of on this is I made the nose too big. It's like a very stocky horse, okay? But yeah, so I'm gonna finish painting that tonight, hopefully. That was my nighttime routine. What else do I do? I guess I just kind of hang out and then um, watch some TV and fall asleep. I hope you guys enjoyed my nighttime routine. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!